the Daly family have been sowing spuds at their farm overlooking Hellfire Bluff in Tasmania's southeast. The sandy soil and sea breeze provide the perfect growing conditions for the family business that now supports three children and their families. Over the past few years, the younger generation has been making its mark. And we just found with the washed potatoes that we were losing too many and just having to feed them to the cows because they didn't look right. And so we thought to ourselves, what can we do with the waste products? We had to develop a way to value add our potatoes, so we decided to open Hellfire Bluff Distillery. Of the 600 tonnes of potatoes processed in the family factory each year, 20% is considered second grade. They're now cooked up by son-in-law Tom Bleetsman, the head distiller. This is our ferment wash. This is the start of our procedure. Uh, we cook up these potatoes, bring them down, pop them through the steel and collect out the alcohol that they create. Over the past two years, the Dailies have developed a potato vodka, a dry gin, and are in the process of developing a potato gin. We've got gin running through at the moment, which we're holding in the column. Basically, just purify the alcohol, uh, and it comes out the other end here, and we collect it in fractions of 10%. In just three months, it's ready for bottling. Everything is done by hand, with the boutique distillery producing about 400 bottles a month. We started off with vodka and we were down at the Salamanca market every Saturday and once we brought in our gin product we almost doubled in our sales instantly because gin is just such a huge thing at the moment. Everyone loves gin. Not far away, at Dodgers Ferry, Rex Burden is making another variety. He started experimenting with slowberries three years ago. For about eight months the little slows sit in our lovely dry gin and during that time the alcohol is forcing juice out of the fruit and it's also extracting colour out of the skin so we end up with a lovely crimson liquid and these slows swell. The berries originating from the UK are similar to blueberries but more sour. They're sourced from properties around northern Tasmania. I think because it's so different, it's proving extremely popular. We get people who detour uh, on their way back to the airport to grab a bottle to take back to Auntie Mary or uh, they've forgotten a gift from Tasmania for a, a friend who's house sitting. Um, it's proved a lot more popular than we thought and thankfully we've been able to uncover enough slows to keep up with the demand. Part of gin's attraction is it's a spirit that doesn't require long maturation, meaning quick returns. There are now 22 different brands of Tasmanian gin on the market and over 130 different varieties being bottled. It's just become the drink of the, the year really. Everyone loves a G&T and, and people like that small batch distillery. We have more distilleries in Tasmania than they do in Ireland at the moment and there are more coming online. The, the excitement around Australia is um, everything Tasmanian. Bill Lark is considered the father of distilling in the state, not just for picking up a swag of awards for his whiskies and gin, but for helping nearly everyone else in the industry get started. When I started, um, nearly 25 years ago, uh, I had a phone call from the Scottish industry two weeks after getting my licence and they said, Bill, we've heard you've got a licence to make whisky, can we help you? And I'm going, wow, that's quite amazing, why would you do that? And uh, uh, they said, well, Bill, if you're going to make whisky, we'd like it to be a good whisky so that if somebody came to your distillery, it was a good experience. Bill Lark's been paying it forward ever since, including with Australia's only copper still maker, Peter Bailey. The former hot water boiler maker fell into the trade almost accidentally. I met uh, Bill Lark and uh, he was telling me about his own plans for his own still and he asked us, uh, to design his ideas into engineering. That was in 2001. He's since made 75 stills and is struggling to keep up with demand, with a waiting list of about 12 months. 
it seems like there is a boom yeah yeah happening now um, a lot of people want to get into it get onto the bandwagon Bill Lark isn't worried about the influx of newcomers I don't think so no my experience has been that um, the more distilleries that we've had and the more product the, the greater recognition we get in the international marketplace it's already gaining international appeal, with one distillery last month winning gold at the World Gin Awards. What we want to make sure of in Tasmania is that everyone maintains this really high standard and uh, becomes part of uh, the collective, if you like, of making sure that Tasmania becomes known not as the Whiskey Island or the Gin Island or the Vodka Island, it becomes a collective of all of those things and we become the Distillery Island. Thank you.